you have a fascinating section in your book about the relationship between Kazan and, uh, and Miller and uh, what happened to it after Kazan named names. Well, what was interesting was what happened before uh, Kazan named names because I came across something just as I was writing that chapter that has never been in print, which was the finally uh, the, the testimony that Kazan gave in secret. His first session was in secret and uh, it was never to be released. And in that session, he refused to name names. And he was as gallant as Lillian Hellman, or uh, nobody was as gallant as Paul Robeson, but he, was, mm -hmm. but he refused. And there were things that he said that were so admirable. For instance, when they asked him whether John Garfield was a communist, he said, John Garfield was an actor who was interested in only two things, his parts and his girlfriends. <laughs> and, he, and Kazan said, for the life of me, I love this, love this, what he said. For the life of me, he said, I don't see how an actor who's reading somebody else's lines that somebody else wrote is going to be spreading communist propaganda. <laughs> Ironically enough, you know, as you know, Kazan directed this film on the waterfront, which was a defense of informing. Mm -hmm. And which was also a rehashing of a project he developed with Miller. Exactly. Well, but you know, Miller after, dropped out of it after, after, after Kazan had refused to name names yeah. and was and would have been free and none of what happened would have happened mm -hmm. because they weren't going to cite him for contempt of Congress. He would have been out of there, you know. Um, but ironically enough it was an informer from the committee who told one, some newspaper in Los Angeles that Kazan had not named anyone and had refused to. And that was when Spiros Gorris, the head of 20th Century Fox, said, you better name names or else you're never going to work in Hollywood again. And Kazan's wife, who had already changed her politics the way she changed her underwear just overnight, you know, that she had become a rabid uh, uh, John Wayne right winger. And she convinced him to go back. And that's when he named people and was vilified and then forever. printed a justification of his right. name. Well, Kazan has said though. Yeah. I mean, he, he said in his in his in his book, A Life, and he said in interviews that he believed that the communism was a threat and he it was against the evils of communism. Well, he, he had to, he had to defend what he did, you know. And at that time, it was a very difficult. The whole situation was difficult. And after all, there was a time when the Chinese communists had just taken over China, you yeah, know. Indeed. So there was some real there was a real, real threat there. there was in something many ways. going on. So. Then we get to your point, where Miller and Kazan had worked on this screenplay called The Hook, which was about crime on the waterfront, labor unions on the waterfront. In fact, based on a, a, a series of articles called Crime on the Waterfront, it's all sounding very familiar, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with so many connections to what ultimately became On the Waterfront, that there's no question that when Miller and Kazan broke up, Kazan took that script and turned it into On the Waterfront. Now, why Why did, did Miller allow, allow him to do take exactly. a script? Exactly. Why didn't Miller do it? And I own, have my own theory. Which is? Which is, as he said, he was terrified when Kazan was going to name names. Why was he terrified? I think he was terrified because he was going, he could have been one of the names named. You think Miller was a communist? He's never said, he's never admitted being a communist. He's always denied it. But the, but the House on American Activities Committee, which is really the House Committee on, on, on American Activities, they were certain that he was a communist, and they kept delaying his appearance, trying to prove it. And they even had a membership card that he had applied for that had his name on it and the name of the person sponsoring it. Actually, now you look back on it and you say, what's the difference? And the fact is that, that the Communist Party was more interested in your membership than the government. All they cared about, if you were a fellow traveler or you're liberal or you're a left-winger, it was the same thing to them anyhow. But at that time, it was very important. Yeah. And Miller... I think I think he was a member of the party, but it really doesn't make a difference. What make what the difference was was that it, I think he was afraid that Kazan was going to name him, and because and I think there was an agreement, whether it was actually verbalized or tacit, if you don't name me, I won't complain about you doing that movie. Hmm. But kind of a backroom deal between the two. And when the movie came out as a defense, and he took Harry he took Miller's screenplay and turned it into a defense of naming names. Then Miller turned around and wrote A View from the Bridge, which his main character is an informer named Eddie Carbone, plainly a name for Ilya Kazan. Mm -hmm. A tragedy, you know, after all, Kazan is Greek, and this is a Greek tragedy about an informer 
who undid himself in betraying his own people. Mm -hmm. Now that was all about Kazan. And um, so that's the story of Miller and Kazan.